All right, folks, welcome to the ultimate LGA SmackDown review. We've got the Alienware 51M, the EVOC P775, that was a mouthful, and the MSI GT76 Titan. All three of these have the i9 9900K and an RTX 2080. There's some problems with some, there's some pros and cons back and forth, there is a lot to cover. All three of these came from HID Evolution. These are review units, I don't get to keep them. They all have liquid metal. For stock thermal performance and details on information on how all of that works, this will be in the description below. A lot of important information there that applies to that process beyond these laptops. Let's start off with the basics and get right into performance rock and roll time. Here we have the Alienware 51M, weighing in 8.6 pounds, not including the power supply units. The CPU is the i9-9900K. It has liquid metal and can pull 210 watts. The RTX 2080 also has liquid metal. It has the 180 watt BIOS flashed and it has a proprietary GPU. It means you can replace this, but you'll have to source that through Dell. There's four DIMM slots total, but we are limited to 2400 megahertz on these Alienware 51Ms, regardless of how many DIMM slots we are occupying at the time. For storage, we have two M.2s and one 2.5 inch drive. The 90 watt hour battery was good for about two hours on our G Sync only Alienware device. There is no MUX switch or Optimus equipped on our Alienware 51M. The Evoc P775 weighs 9.2 pounds minus the power supply units. The i9 9900K has liquid metal. The second power limit from the factory will be 118 watts, the first power limit to 95 watts. But these do have the Prima BIOS, which is exclusive to HID Evolution, and it is very feature-rich, so you could execute a lot of overclocks as well as XMP profiles. More on this in a little bit. The RTX 2080 is liquid metal. It has a 150-watt BIOS flash, which you're going to see shortly. It does not hold it back one bit. These are MXM modules, and therefore very replaceable later on down the road should you wish to upgrade. Four DIMM slots. 2666 plus with XMP profiles, which is really nice for faster RAM. For storage, we have two M.2s, two two and a half inch drives. The 80 watt hour battery was good for two hours and it is G-Sync only. There's no MUX switch and there's no NVIDIA Optimus on this Clevo based chassis. The GT76 Titan weighs nine pounds, not including both power supply units. It too features the i9-9900K with liquid metal. First power limit goes to 230 watts, second to 170. You will rarely see anything close to this when using this. It seems to be very BIOS limited. The RTX 2080 features liquid metal. It is a 200 watt variant, but it is BGA soldered on. You cannot replace this. Four DIMM slots total on the GT76. Two of them are occupied for our testing today. Should you desire occupying all four DIMM slots, expect the memory to go from 2666 down to 2400. This is very common on these MSI chassis. I've seen it happen more times than not. For storage, we have three M.2s and a single 2.5 inch drive. The 90 watt hour battery is good for about two to three hours and features NVIDIA Optimus technology only. There's no MUX or G-Sync on the GT76 Titan in any variant of its kind. With the basic specs on the left hand side, the benchmarks don't always reflect the wattage being pulled from the chip. The GPU on each one of these laptops runs very close to one another in real life. When it comes to benchmarks, certain things score higher than others just when you wouldn't expect it. Same with the CPU. Things are not always what they seem when it comes to benchmarks, but the gameplay is going to reveal some very interesting truths that you need to be made aware of. When running all three laptops in the same Battlefield 5 static thermal testing environment, it only takes a few minutes before that Alienware hits its GPU thermal limitations of 75 degrees Celsius. More on this shortly. Meanwhile, the P775 does a really good job of keeping the highest frame rate out of all of them, despite the lower wattage of the GPU. And then the GT76, while the loudest of the bunch, definitely runs the coolest at the cost of being twice as loud as the rest. So with the Alienware being the problem child, let me just give you an idea of what to expect should you desire specs like this without any sort of tuning or tweaks. Not even into a game of Battlefield 5 yet, the CPU temperatures and wattage are quite high and once you get into that game, even at maximum fan, which is what we are using here, expect to see 100 degrees Celsius on that CPU mighty quick. And it would only take an additional five to seven minutes before that GPU hit that thermal throttle limit that we showed in the firing range. 
So I thought it would be pretty extreme that if we just limited the wattage, the first and second power limits set on the Alienware are at 210, let's just limit both of those to 80. Surely this thing can handle 80 watts of cooling, right? What's the worst thing that could happen? With both power limits of our 9900K in the Alienware set to 80 watts, maximum fan running, surely this should be enough to have a combined improved thermal solution to keep the GPU from thermal throttling, right? Not at all. Sped up for time, this is five and a half minutes into a fresh game of Battlefield 5, and we will have the GPU thermal throttle itself, neutering the performance by a good 50% or more. At this point, it would take the machine about 30 to 60 seconds to recover, and then everything would be back to normal for a matter of one or two minutes, and then it would just have this endless loop of going back and forth. Now the P7750 up top and the GT76 Titan down below had no problem maintaining respectable temperatures and excellent performance no matter how many hours I would play of my favorite titles. And as you can see here, it's holding up quite strong. I would have no problem letting you guys watch this for hours on end. The gameplay wouldn't be that impressive, but the overall thermal and frame rate performance sure as heck would be. Now the GT76 Titan has excellent thermal performance, especially out of the box at maximum fan, but that does come at an acoustic cost. Have a listen. That sucker's loud, isn't it? Pretty crazy. When it comes to benchmarks, as you can see, all of the wattages on these laptops, they were all over the place. Benchmarks really didn't necessarily favor one thing over another. It was sort of wishy-washy. Welcome to the world of benchmarks. Now, when it came to the gameplay, especially in that static test environment, the lower wattage GPU in the Evoc machine actually performed a little bit higher. The MSI is a screaming banshee and it did a very good job, but at the expense of 50 extra watts going to the GPU, maybe that's not something you need. And this, holy cow, that 75 degree thermal throttle limitation is a problem. It used to not be this way, but once they went past BIOS 1.5, it enabled G-Sync on these laptops, but it lowered the GPU thermal throttle threshold from 87 to 75 degrees. Now this does not affect the RTX 2070 model, only the 2080 model. If you want to flash back, Dell doesn't want you doing that. They give you a warning saying, sorry, this can't be done. You're not allowed to flash an older BIOS on top of a newer one. There is a way around this. Google is your friend. But if you go down that road and you start flashing BIOSes that are older or video BIOSes, please contact your manufacturer to see if that's going to be okay. Sometimes these guys don't mind if you do that, but that's a road that you're going to have to go down and understand the consequences on doing so. You flash back to an older BIOS 1.5, you are going to get that thermal headroom back on the 2080, but G-Sync is going to be gone. Sort of a bummer, right? So now let's proceed with what makes these things laptops as laptops. We'll use them as such. Check it out. It's rock and roll. The Alienware's trackpad uses Synaptex drivers. While it does light up, there was some tracking issues from time to time. If you disable the Toby eye tracking, a lot of times it can clean this up, but by no means will it be good as a Windows Precision solution. Trying to install Windows Precision drivers on top of this has been troublesome. Your mileage may vary. The keyboard feels pretty good. The keys are a little close together, but the travel distance is really nice. Now there are macros in the far left hand side, so that could be a little difficult getting used to for some people. We do have macros above the number pad. Those are no problem. The RGB is very bright on the Alienware device, so I'm very happy with that. The Evo P775, the trackpad on it is plastic. Now we do have a Windows Precision driver installed on here and the Biometrics fingerprint reader, which is also very nice, although that is 50-50 on how well it works on the first try. The keyboard deck is plastic. The keyboard itself does feel very nice. It's a very basic design, very tried and true, and it's been working for a long time, but I am growing tired of it. Very easy to type on, no hidden macros, and no weirdness overall. The RGB of the keyboard, however, is very dimly lit in broad daylight. You're not gonna see it at nighttime, it is okay. All in all, it works, but I would like something new here. Now, the GT76 Titan, the trackpad is made of glass. It has Windows Precision. It was definitely the easiest to use. The buttons had the best click. The keyboard deck is all metal. The SteelSeries keyboard is always solid. If you're getting tired of this, 
Well, I don't think they're going to change it because this works very well. The keyboard spacing is solid. The RGB is good. It is per key. There's very little to complain about. And when the Titan is in front of you, it feels the smallest because that hinge forward design. I like it, but I've used it dozens of times now, but I still like it. So now let's check out those webcams. The 720p webcam and microphone on our Alienware 51M. The lighting is definitely the most blown out and the colors are overly saturated. Overall, between the three, I do find this one to have the lowest quality. Keyboard stroke sound, just like this. Now, as far as our Clevo base machine, the P775 has a 1080p webcam. The microphone sounds better than any of the other two, and the overall image quality is much truer to life than what I see on most other gaming laptops. When it comes to the keyboard strokes, they sound like this. Not bad, Clevo. And lastly, the GT76 Titan. The 720p webcam and microphone look and sound like this. The blowout of lighting and the overcolor saturation nowhere near as bad as we had on the Alienware machine, but by no means is this the Clevo beating standard. Keyboard stroke sound, just like this. Here we have the specs of all three displays and their color gamut based on the post color calibration with the Spider 5 Pro. Now the Alienware 51M and the EVOC P775 both feature G Sync and they do not have a MUX switch and the GT76 is an Optimus-based laptop only. Now, both Alienware and Clevo-based machines are using Full HD 144 Hz, and our GT76 gets the 240 Hz panel. But besides all of that, the Alienware display is a little bit brighter and has a little bit stronger color gamut. Can you tell the difference between the three? Probably not, but here's a really good picture for your eyes, and you let me know in the comments below which one you think is better. When it comes to brightness, they're all within 30 nits of each other, very close, and when I have been using this back and forth, going from one laptop to the other, I did not notice any difference when it came to color saturation or brightness, and when it comes to G-Sync, well, let's be honest here, it's pretty awesome, but if you can saturate that GPU on a few games out there and utilize that 240 hertz, I don't think you're going to miss G-Sync. And getting that little bit better battery life with Optimus, maybe that's your cup of tea as well. When it comes to port selection and port placement, this one's very interesting when comparing all three of these laptops. If you want the bare minimum simplicity as well as excellent port placement, the Alienware will win this hands down. But if you need this for more than just gaming and you need all these necessary ports such as SD card readers, mini display ports, just the works, line in and line out for audio, there's a lot of options on the EVOC P775 that most laptops cannot compete with. Not only that, but the exhaust on this machine is forced out the back so there's no side exhaust, which is really nice for your right hand or left hand mouse hand depending on how you utilize your laptop. Now, when it comes to the GT76, it's almost up there with the Clevo-based model. There is a mini card reader instead, and the ports are just ever so slightly lacking, but it does do a good job of managing all of these ports, despite their placement being a little sketchy due to the fact that there's nothing but exhaust in the rear of that laptop. The Alienware 51M uses both power supplies, a 330-watt unit and a 180-watt unit. The 180 watt power supply unit runs 10 to 15 degrees Celsius warmer than the 330 watt brick. Both of these need to be connected in order to get the best performance from gaming. Disconnecting one of them while at load typically results in a black screen. If you were to try to run one of these at a fresh start for a various game, expect performance to be cut in half or worse. Now, I like what they did here at first because I would like to think that I could take this 180 watt power supply and the laptop around for portability tasks. And it does okay with that PSU. There is a little bit of battery drain depending on what you're doing, minus gaming. The biggest and most annoying issue is that the Alienware Control Center likes to let you know that you're running under power and to please plug in the other power supply unit, regardless of which one you have plugged in. So poorly executed, but the thought process going into this look good. I would like to see this fixed in an update, but this has been out for a long time and I just don't see it happening. Now without question, hands down, the P775 does this the best. Now granted we have two very large 330 watt power supply units, I can get by with just running one, which makes 
moving this gaming machine over to a friend's house and just overall gaming portability that much better than the other two systems. And it didn't compromise on the performance because everything that you see here is running stock. Here we have the power supply units times two running this game. I'm going to unplug both of them and just reconnect the one doing away with the other power supply and the splitter. And as you can see, the performance in wattage and everything is still in check. And I'm still able to feed this beast with a single 330 watt unit. I don't know of any other laptops with specs like this that can pull that off. And the other two most certainly cannot. So when it comes down to the bare bones minimum on the go, this one will win hands down. Now the GT76 uses both 230 watt power supply units. They are physically tethered together at the cable at the very end. You must use both of these. There's no way around it. So this is what you get on this particular machine. At least the power supply bricks themselves are relatively small in size. Nonetheless, both are a must on the MSI GT76 Titan. Now, when it came to the keyboard, the trackpad, the overall layout, that's going to be pretty subjective. But if 100 of you were here, I bet you 50 of you would prefer this one. And then this would kind of be split up maybe 20, 30. Using these over the last three weeks, I really didn't make too many mistakes on these two. But on this one, I was essentially flawless. The displays, I like G-Sync. This one has the nicest display. But when you compare all three in the real world, I had a very hard time distinguishing between each one unless I actually looked at the bezel and of course realized what laptop I was using. So kudos to that as they were all pretty close and this one having a really high panel refresh rate uh, could be a positive for many people, but there's no G-Sync on here, which is sort of a bummer. Now the port selection and port placement as a gamer only, I think this one's gonna seal the deal. It's really nice. I do like how the exhaust on the P775 is piped out the back and not on the sides like these two machines. The port selection on the P775 is amazing. You're really not going to get too much more on a laptop than this. And the MSI trails closely behind, but I just don't particularly like having no ports back here on a laptop that's going to be stationary most of the time. But I gotta give credit to MSI for just having an amazing thermal solution here. And if that was at the expense of that, I think that's gonna be a trade-off that some are willing to accept to have that amazing thermal performance. After all, I get more complaints about hot laptops than I do about port placement. So let's proceed and uh, yeah, hopefully you're enjoying this so far. All right, let's rock and roll. So the Alienware Control Center is the lifeblood of the 51M. It's a very heavy piece of software taking almost 30 seconds at times to fully open. The overclocking capability and just the overall usability of this is also very generic. I would like more fine tuning, but with a lighter piece of software. And personally, removing this from the system is not ideal. Should you desire it, you are gonna lose what little fan control you have, so I don't recommend it. Honestly, I think this system needs a lot of work in this department, and it is working better than it did when it first launched, but it still has a long way to go, and sometimes simple is good. The EVOC P775 uses the Control Center 2.0. Maximum fan is in here, which is very nice. The overall software is lightweight and relatively easy to use, despite looking a lot more complicated than it needs to be. Any CPU overclocking should be done in the outstanding BIOS versus the software. GPU overclocking, you could leave that up to MSI Afterburner. If it were me, that's what I would do. Controlling RGB here is nice, despite it not being too bright. Overall, relatively simple to use. The MSI Dragon Center does do a lot of things for the GT76, but many of which you can live without. My favorite part is the ability to fine tune the GPU and CPU fans independently, and I do appreciate that, but I also like the fact that I do not need this software to get the most out of this machine. I can use that dedicated maximum fan button to ramp up the fans and then tune everything how I see fit within the BIOS or third party software. The SteelSeries keyboard software has been working very good for several years. It is its own separate entity that will come pre-installed on the system as well. I do like that it's working flawlessly here today. So we do have that.
accessibility and upgradability and the ease at which this can happen is easier on the Alienware than the others. The bottom panel screws will stay attached to the bottom panel and getting access to two M.2 slots, a single two and a half inch drive, and all four memory DIMM slots. That's right, all of them are available to you right there. It's easier and faster than it is on the other two devices, especially when you compare it to the MSI. However, the storage is the most lackluster between the two, and getting to the GPU and CPU is harder on this one as well. Accessibility and upgradability on the P775 is pretty good as well. The screws that hold down the bottom plates, once you remove those, the panels slide away from the actual laptop. We have two M.2s and two 2.5 two inch drives, all pretty accessible. The two memory DIMM slots that are occupied are on the other side of the board. The two empty ones present themselves right before you. Being an MXM GPU and the LGA CPU, accessibility of those components are actually easier here than they are on the Alienware device. All in all, not too bad, minus the memory location. Accessibility and upgradability on the GT76 Titan is the hardest of the three, but it only takes about five minutes to get that bottom panel off. You will have access to three M.2 drives, a single two and a half inch drive bay, and two empty memory DIMMs. The other two are occupied on the other side of the motherboard. The GPU is soldered to the board, so of course you cannot remove that. The CPU is LGA, hence the SmackDown, and that is accessible pretty much just as easy as a traditional laptop for the most part. The Alienware BIOS is pretty lean considering it has an overclockable CPU. Pretty much everything you can do on here from an overclocking standpoint can be done in the software and it is pretty stripped down. There are some battery settings and various other creature comforts and quality of life that I think a lot of people will appreciate, but on a laptop that can feature that K model SKU on the CPU, having some more options in here, well, I wouldn't have been too upset about, but perhaps Dell's just playing it safe from a customer standpoint. Now the Evoc machine has a Prima BIOS and it has so many overclocking features in here. Your head may spin a little bit. You're going to want to get on some forums so people can direct your sales here. It's just going to be very chip dependent and a lot of these settings are going to require a lot of trial and error. But there's a lot of cool features in here that any enthusiast would want to have across any machine. And we get these on a laptop. And when it comes to laptop overclocking, having the Prima BIOS is pretty much as good as you can get for the most part. The BIOS tunability on the GT76 Titan falls somewhere between the Alienware machine and the Prima BIOS on the EVOC device. What that means is we still have some clock speed adjustments, a little bit of voltage tweaking. We can actually lower the power limits, increasing them really didn't work out too well on this chassis. When it comes to memory tuning, I didn't have much luck here. Others, perhaps a little bit more. There are some tweaks that you can do within this BIOS, and that's something that you really can't do on the Alienware device, but by no means is it as robust as a Prima BIOS EVOC P775. All right. So that is what we get with these laptops. Which one do I recommend? Well, let me tell you what I want. I want the Alienware chassis. I want the out of the box thermal and frame rate performance that we get out of the P775, including all of the BIOS options. I want that level of sophistication and quality coming to me from a performance standpoint in this chassis. But I want the fan control, the keyboard, the, the trackpad, the things that make this a laptop in a friendly sort of way to also be ported over to here because that Synaptics driver and keyboard, it's okay. It looks pretty, but I just, I want those creature comforts and usabilities from this, from this, ported into here because I think this chassis looks leagues better than these two, especially this one. But when it comes to just here, Jim, buy this laptop because it is pretty much fire and forget for the most part until you want to start tuning, then you go down that road on your own, but just out of the box. Oh, I only want to use one power supply or oops, I forgot to bring the other power supply. Well, you can't do that, right? This one you can. This is just easy to use, out of the box, nice fan acoustics, the speakers sound okay. The thermal performance is good. The frame rate performance is good. There's just not a whole lot of hidden quirks with this thing other than the fact that it looks like it's five years old. And I think the chassis is long overdue for an update. Rumor has it, one is coming. So we'll see about that. Now, when it comes to the MSI, 
It's as if MSI just was afraid to decimate the competition. The Titan series laptops used to have a removable GPU, an MXM GPU module. It used to have a MUX switch that would allow us to go to Optimus graphics, to the dedicated graphics, and then have G-Sync on top of that. What happened to that? You made a sweet looking Titan. This thing looks so good. And the keyboard is great. The trackpad is great. The deck is all metal. It's a good laptop, but it's missing that MUX. It's missing G-Sync. And then maybe if you want to put icing on the cake, give us that MXM GPU and then figure out a better way to allow us to run this laptop off of a single power supply. If you did those four things, there would be no need for these to exist. And then you would just have to listen to the community as they tell you how they want the laptop to look. And then you could just provide those solutions and let it rain cash. So what do you think about this review style? Let me know in the comments below. This was my version of the ultimate LGA Smackdown feature in the Alienware 51M, the MSI GT76 Titan, and the EVOC P775 Clevo base chassis. Links in the description below and many details covering these three laptops. And I'm Bob of all trades, and I'll see you in the next video.